I'm especially excited today and I'm guessing you want to know why. So Ava Media released a new capture card earlier this year that is going to make a lot of streamers happy and for good reason too. Today we're checking out the Live Gamer Duo GC570D coming in at a very reasonable $249.99, so you want to stick around for this one. So make sure to smash that like and subscribe button down below to support us for free so that we can continue to make unbiased reviews for you. So why am I excited about this capture card? Well, what makes it different from any other capture card? The name kind of gives it away with the word duo. Usually capture cards have one input and one pass through output, but the new GC750D has two inputs and one pass through output. There have been multiple input capture cards available in the past. Just look at the aging Majewell Pro series, for example, that goes up to four inputs, but these are around £900 new and don't even support 4K. The reason the Live Gamer Duo is so exciting is because it brings multiple input capture to the masses at a very accessible price point whilst delivering some seriously enticing specs. So why do we need multiple input capture? There are a few scenarios that you'll need multiple capture cards for, but the driving force behind Ava Media making this card in particular is for game and camera feed. As many streamers have now turned towards using DSLRs or mirrorless cameras instead of webcams, they require two inputs for the best video signal, meaning they need a dedicated capture card for their game and another card for their camera. Running multiple capture cards can be a pain and of course can be expensive. Elgato have their external USB cam link, which is great, but it's still a separate card. So let me give you an example of why running multiple capture cards can be an issue. I myself, with my wife, stream occasionally. We have a three PC setup, a gaming PC each, two DSLR or mirrorless cameras, along with a dedicated streaming PC. And this means we need four inputs, so four capture cards. We previously used two internal capture cards for our gaming PCs and two external capture cards for our cameras. The problem here is USB bandwidth overload. Different USB ports can be on the same bus and when connecting USB capture cards, mice, keyboards, speakers, microphones, every, everything, you know, there's so many things. This overloads the USB USB's bandwidth and leads to problems. The main issue is USB capture cards stop working, they become intermittent or just cease altogether. And this leads to our cameras freezing whilst live or just cutting out altogether as well. And I've had many headaches over all this, trust me. So the reason the new Live Gamer Duo is exciting is because instead of four capture cards stealing our USB and internal resources, we can have two PCIe capture cards that will take all four video feeds without having to worry about the fees dropping due to overloading or other issues. This also frees up our USB ports too, so it's a win-win situation and a complete solution to our problems. Now you've had an example of why I'm so excited, let's crack on. So the packaging is great, it has a high quality gloss photo of the card on the front and we have specifications and key features around the edges and the back of the box as well. Inside you'll just find the capture card here in an anti-static bag. Design wise we have an open board on the back of the card, there's no back plate and a metal casing around the front with angled cutouts for heat dissipation. On the sides if you can see through your case if you've got a panel that lets you do so, there is an Ava Media logo with an RGB section. It's a quite modern design and it's quite aggressive looking as well. It looks nice in the case. The capture card itself is 140 by 125 by 22 millimeters and it weighs 209 grams. This is fairly small and it doesn't have any sag at all, but it does have a large metal casing over the board. This can be an issue if you're placing it in the bottom PCIe lane like I have. The metal casing hits into my cables going into the lowest input of my motherboard, which can damage them. Sadly, I didn't even notice any of this until I'd already Already inserted the card. So of course you can have it in a higher slot and this won't be an issue, but if you're planning to run two of these at the same time, then you know be careful. Installing the card is easy, remove the screw and take out the back guard on your case if you have one. Get your capture card and evenly insert it into the PCIe lane that will support the card. In this case being a PCIe lane gen 2 times 4 Then replace the screw to secure it into place. And that's it. 
you're done. It's really easy. I found the whole installation process very straightforward. And if you're new to installing internal PC components, I think you'll be absolutely fine because it couldn't be any simpler. Just so you know, the system requirements are Windows 10 times 64, Intel i5 6th gen or Ryzen 5 1600 or better, eight gig of RAM, along with a GTX 1050 and R7 560 or above. So let's dive into some key features and technical specifications. As I mentioned, the dual input is designed for game capture and camera feeds, and as such, both inputs do not have the same specifications. Input one is capable of receiving a maximum of 4K HDR signal at 60 FPS, but also 1080p at 240 FPS. The pass report is capable of outputting these two, which is excellent. That means that you can game how you want and not have your own experience interrupted by inferior frame rates or resolutions like we've had to do in the past. I can hear you PC gamers shouting 4K 60, 1080p 240, but what about 1440p? And this was my initial concern too, and Ava Media don't really shout about this one, but in the specifications you can see 1440p up to 144 FPS is supported. Since this is actually the specs myself and my wife use, I can confirm during my testing the 1440p up to 144 frames per second works absolutely fine. There is one slight drawback that will affect some though. Despite up to 4K 60 HDR input and pass through, the GC570D actually downscales this signal to 1080p HDR. This means that your PC and whatever broadcasting or recording software you're going to use will only see the input as 1080p. This is only a negative if you're wanting to record 4K footage for say YouTube for example, because you'll only be able to record at 1080p. So input one supports 1080p 60 HDR recording and input two supports 1080p 60 without HDR recording. So for streamers, which this card is completely aimed at, this isn't an issue whatsoever since the maximum resolution you can stream at is 1080p anyway. The positive here for streamers is that the card processes this downscaling conversion on board and that means less strain on your streaming PC as it doesn't need to do it itself. As for the other input, HDMI in 2, the specs are totally different. This port has no pass-through capability, it's strictly an input, and it's capable of 1080p 60fps or lower. It also supports 1080i, 720p, 576p, and 480p. Just to clarify, input 1 also supports these extra resolutions. The reason input 2 only supports these lower specs is because that it's strictly aimed at camera feeds. Since everyone streams at a maximum of 1080p or lower, anyway and the fact that your camera feed on your stream is usually in a tiny little box in the corner there's absolutely no need to set your camera to 4k even 1080p is actually overkill here so side note, if you're confused as to why people stream in 1080p or less, or want to know how to set up and start streaming yourself, make sure to check out our dedicated streaming guides here at KitGuru. Since Input 2 supports up to 1080p, it doesn't mean it can only be used for cameras though. You could actually hook up your PlayStation or your PC to HDMI 1, and then have your 1080p Nintendo Switch into HDMI 2 if you really wanted to. The only issue there is, is the lack of pass-through for HDMI 2 but you could see your game footage on your PC screen via OBS for example. It's not entirely practical, but it's definitely possible. Ava Media have their own software called Assist Central. This is handy for new users as it will detect any Ava Media capture card and show you all the available downloads. We're going to take a look at their other software which is Ava Media's own broadcasting and recording software called Rec Central. Let's first go over the settings tab. Select Live Gamer Duo 1. You can see a lighting tab and I haven't mentioned RGB really because there's not really anything to say here. There are three RGB LEDs behind the Ava Media logo on the card itself. You can't choose your own colors, but instead you have to choose from two settings, which is color cycle or color breathe. You can change the speed, but that's it. With the cycle, you can clearly see each LED shifting color. It's not smooth and instead it's really jarring. And the fact that you can't select a single color or just two colors to swap between means that you cannot match your own RGB theme if you have one running in your system or your desk setup. Luckily you can switch the RGB LEDs off though which is what I ended up doing. Still in settings the about tab lets you check for firmware updates and HDCP tab settings are there for recording iOS devices. I don't own any Apple products so I can't walk you through this one. Moving over to capture slash stream tab on the top left wheel we have two capture modes multi and single. Single mode is the only way to record full HD HDR footage. 
you can only record one capture device at a time. In Rec Central, both inputs are displayed as separate capture cards, so remember Live Gamer Duo 1 is for the console or PC input, Live Gamer Duo 2 is for your camera input. This tab also gives you live HDR preview, providing you have an HDR supported monitor, which I don't, but if you do, click the HDR button in the lower right hand corner to enable HDR preview. Ava Media recommends setting the recording quality on the left side to optimal, but if you want to change it to your own setting, settings then click the plus button. When you're ready to record hit the big record button in the bottom right. To see your recordings go to the cog in the top left and select media share and this shows you your recordings. Moving back over to the capture screen multi mode is the option to choose if you want to stream. Luckily it's super intuitive to use just like all other streaming software all you need to do is add sources which are your inputs for your overlays your game inputs your camera etc so it's easy to do. Since the GC5 70D's two inputs are seen as separate capture cards in the software, you do need to add them separately by using the plus button. Select the devices and then select Live Gamer Duo 1 or 2 separately. If you want to add an overlay, select Image. Then you can rearrange and resize these on the screen by clicking on them. On the bottom left next to recording settings is a blue circle. Click that one and you can set up your streaming platform by entering your stream key or logging in. You can also change the stream quality and more. When you're ready, hit the huge stream button in the bottom right. If you'd prefer to use another program such as OBS Studio, then Live Gamer Duo's two inputs are still seen as separate capture cards, so just add them as a source like any other capture card. If you're unsure how to do this, then make sure to watch our video titled Kit Guru's Guide to PC Streaming for Newbies. Whether you choose to use OBS Studio like I do or Rec Central, you can't really go wrong. It's so easy to set up and I've not ran into a single issue whilst using this card and I've been testing it for quite quite some time. And that's quite rare because usually there's always sort of teething problems with capture cards. There is one thing you must know if you're planning on upgrading from a webcam to using a full on camera setup though. The camera you choose must be capable of sending a clean HDMI feed over the HDMI. Clean HDMI means the camera will send the video feed without anything on it as if you're recording uh, a video. Non-clean HDMI will send all data shown on the viewfinder or the screen of the camera. So you'll end up sending all the information such as ISO, shutter speed, etc. And you don't want this, so make sure your camera supports clean HDMI. If you're a content creator that is only focused on recording the best quality gameplay or PC footage for your YouTube channel, then this is definitely not the card for you. There's plenty of single input cards like the Elgato 4K60 Pro Mark II, or even Ava Media's Live Gamer 4K HDR. However, if you're a live streamer that uses a camera instead of a webcam and also wants to occasionally record a bit of footage now and then, then this is an absolute must have in my opinion. No need for two separate capture cards taking up room or USB resources, and it's cheaper too. An Elgato 4K60 Pro Mark II and Elgato's Camlink will set you back around 340 pounds. Whereas you can get best of both worlds here for just one unit at just £250. Or compare the cost of two of these for £500 against the Magewell Pro Quad for nearly £1,000. So you can see what I'm getting at here. In my opinion, it's a no-brainer. The GC570D just wins. In conclusion, I absolutely love the GC570D Live Gamer Duo by Ava Media. Yes, the RGB LED panel is basically pointless in my opinion. Yes, it only records 1080p, not 4K, and the housing is slightly too big if you put it in the lowest PCIe lane. It could could cause damage to some cables. But if you can look past these niggles, then this capture card is absolutely fantastic. So what do you guys think of this capture card? Let us know down below if you're gonna pick one up or if you have one already. Make sure to check out our merchandise down below. You can check out our website daily for tech news as well. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. I'm Andy, this is Kit Guru. I'll see you in the next one. See you later.